Never mind what weather it is, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So, I was just asking you, this was something I, I thought about yesterday when I was looking at the fire. Um, so I was asking them, it was in Urdu a, a long time ago, in a, in a bayan I heard this. Um, a game called Akhrot or something. But they're saying they haven't heard of it, so I don't think it exists. There's probably another word for it. Unless it's a Persian word or something. Nevertheless, but the story goes that a man was walking by, um, you know, and some children, they were playing some a, a certain game. I think they spend money on. And he sees that there was a child there and the child wasn't playing the game. Whatever the game that was, the child wasn't playing it. So then... He said to the child, like, you know, why don't you go and play with them? I'm assuming it's something bad, it was probably some sort of gamble or whatever it is. He says that, you know, why do you not go and play? Why do you not go and play this game with the, with the other children? He's a youngster, a small child. So he says, he says that at home, when, when my... When my mother is lighting up the oven, when she's firing up the oven, I see her putting the small sticks first and then the big sticks. The small wood first and then the big ones. And if you actually see it, if you ever go back home or generally, the, the small sticks, they come, um, they're more effective to light the fire or to kind of take the fire to the next level than the uh, the bigger ones. So he says that I see my mother lighting and firing up the small sticks before the big sticks. So I fear, I fear that Allah may put us children into the fire of Jahannam before the elders, before the older ones. That's why I don't want to. That's why I don't want to play that game. And yesterday, obviously Allah, Allah, Allah is the most merciful. But this is a child's understanding. So yesterday I was just observing the fire and I saw that the, the smaller ones, they were burning out quickly. They were burning first and they burnt out quickly then, and the bigger ones were there longer. And then he already said the ayat, the ayat came to mind. That the, the fuel of the fire of Jahannam the fuel of the fire of Jahannam is going to be people That's and gross. stone. People and stone. The fuel of the fire of Jahannam. So there, there's a possibility, especially the way we sin and the mistakes we make, there's a possibility that we're just basically logs and firewood for Jahannam. For the, we. the actual people. The people we. who have to, yes. The people who have to burn in Jahannam. So that was just some. Uh, There's a lot of wisdom behind that. Food for thought. Look, actually, just just look at it right now. The small ones they're just burning out, mm. and the big ones are there. So the big ones could be considered as the real Jahannami people. <coughs> the small ones are there to be obviously light them. Small ones just like the fuel for, for Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, oh. but they use the word in Urdu and say Badkai Jayagi. Yeah. So that's the, the word for that. And, and <coughs> the other thing is that we can look at in this sense that the big ones, they've lived more so they've sinned more. And they're burning more. And oh. the little ones sin less. So burn less. But um, but in real life terms, when you do look at someone older than you, you should think that this person has lived longer, so he's done more good deeds than me. And when you look at someone who's younger than you in age, you should see that this person is younger, so he's done less sin than I have. Rather than saying, oh, he's younger than me, so I've done more than him, and he's older than me, so, so um, he's done more sin than me. You should look at things the other way around. It's about perception. Um, there's one more thing that you said. I just add that to it. You see, this will this will run out. Obviously, once it's finished, 
will just go away. But for Jahannam, we know that we'd, get, we'd be getting new skins every now and then. So we are the fuel for fire and we'd be getting new skins so that we keep on, I mean, we have to light up, light it up. So we just get new skin every now and then and it, it'll be, stay there forever. So, so there's, there's no lessening of the pain. It's, it's just going to be there every now and then. This is going to run out, but that's not going to run out. So he cancels the That's what it is. Badanna ghayraha. Liyadhuqul adab. So you may taste. Allah uses the word yadhuq. Dhaqa yadhuq means to taste. So you may taste the punishment. And obviously in, in terms of real taste, the, the taste in Jahannam is going to be zaqqum. It's, it's like a cactus-like fruit. One drop of it, yeah. And that, and, and then even in Jahannam, people will feel thirsty. In Jahannam, but when, they, when they're feeling thirsty, they'll, they'll have boiling water. Or some people say they'll be drinking pus, pus yeah, yeah. peep, pus. And that, that will go inside and they, then it will burn up the intestines. So, you know, as someone says, Jaise kanni waise banni Jaisa karoge waise banni Jaise kanni waise banni Na mano to karke dek You reap what you sow so If you don't believe You reap what you sow If you don't believe Do it and you'll see You'll find out Jannat bhi hai dozakh bhi hai Na mani to marke dek Jannat is a reality Jahannam is a reality If you don't believe die and you'll see That's not to say you jump off a cliff or anything because even, even dying is in the hands of Allah Ta'ala. You can't die by your own will. You know, there was a case, I've, I always see this incident I heard. I think it was in America or somewhere. These things probably happen in America. Man, man got, a man got fed up. He got fed up of life. Completely, completely fed up of life. So he decided that no, I've had enough, I'm just going to jump off a building. He probably climbed all the stairs all the way up or went, took the lift up. He got right to the top of the building and got to the cliff of the building and he jumped down thinking that, you know what, I've had enough, I'm, I'm, I'm going, it's over. And while he, was, while, while he was coming down, thinking he's finished, someone was walking by him at the time so when he came and he landed, he fell on that person. And the person that he fell on, he died, and this guy survived. So dying, we can't even die if we want. Dying is in the hands of Allah. So if you're going to live, you live for the sake of Allah, and you're going to die, you die for Allah's sake. Because ultimately, nothing's in our hand. That's not to say we don't have a choice. Of course we have a choice. But everything's under the under the will of Allah Ta'ala, under the permission of Allah. So if Allah, if you deem it, but Allah doesn't deem it, it will never happen. And if Allah deems something and you don't, it's going to happen, it's gonna happen either way. Like for example, just today when we were talking earlier about how we ended up going that way, we were meant to go the other way, but we went the other direction to the second destination. We didn't even know. We didn't even know we went to the wrong place until we came back. So, no, this is how it is. MashaAllah, people are fueling up Jahannam. Just be careful. Dark here. I, I used to always read, read the ayat in, in, in Salah. Because it's deep. It's very deep. Yeah, it's horrible. Even the, even the guards. Uh, e even the angels, angels. When we think of angels, we think of kind and you know nice, compassionate, uh, compassionate, beings. you know uh, sinless, innocent Beacons. beings. But Jahannamans, Ghiladun Shidad, they're going to be strict and severe, and you know very upfront. La yasun Allah ma amarahum. You know what, what we do in the world, especially when you go to third world countries. If we if we get in trouble, we just you know here just buy something. And they put it in their pocket and, you know, bribe. We bribe people. You can't bribe your way out of Jahannam, mate. Yeah. 
You can't bribe your way out of Jahannam. They're not going to disobey Allah. Offer them anything and everything. But, uh, you know, you're not getting away from there. And the description of the angels of death, when they come, and even we talk about Munkar and Nakir in, in Kabr, I mean, these, these guys are not compassionate. You can't bribe your way out of there. You can't. SubhanAllah, there's, there's three ways. There's three ways of getting what you want. Forgotten them now. One is... One is bribing. You're bribing your way out of something. You're bribing your way into something. Just pay and get in. And another is by force. You force your way into something else, into something. And the third way is by crying. You cry your way. So, when we're with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with Allah in the sense that, you know, when we're in our ibadat and dua and stuff like that, you should, you cry, you should cry. You can't bribe your way with Allah and you can't force your way with Allah. You, you you humble yourself with Allah. You know, someone gave the example of humility. You know when you have a jug of water, okay? If I hold the jug like this, all right? Say we have a few jugs around here and there's the fire burning. Or say there's a hole there and we want to fill the hole. If all the jugs are upright, will any water come out of the jugs? If I hold the jug like this, will any water come out of the jug? No. No, no you can hold all of them like that. Will any water come out of it? No. As soon as you start to tilt it, tilt it, will the water come out? Yeah. The water will come from all of them. So similarly, man rafa'ullah. When you humble yourself below Allah, before Allah, show some humility. Rafa'ullah, Allah will elevate you. Just the way when you pour the jugs, if you hum tilt the jugs down, then some sort of benefit will be gained.